Well, welcome back, everyone, for session two. Behavior change is one thing, we have talked about that, but uh, financial, environmental, and social sustainability are also uh, very important issues uh, that we need to give attention to in order to make uh, last mile logistics really work. Um, because while uh, the main objective of consolidation centers and cargo bikes and zero emission vans is of course to reduce uh, congestion and emissions, these models also need to be financially, financially uh, sustainable in order to be successful. Because if a pilot or project is not financially uh, stable, uh, or if people don't want to do the jobs, we will not get far with it, of course. <laughs> Again, we will talk about uh, the pilot results, but uh, we also want to focus on the other speakers' experiences. And the speakers are from the Belgian Foreign Trade Agency, Legal Director Koen van Heusde, um, from the Luxembourg Institute of Science and Technology, Rui Martins, and from uh, the Green Link, uh, Michael Darchambault. Please take a seat. Um, Mr. Martins, may I start with you? Because uh, the Luxembourg Institute for Science and Technology um, uh, has made a case study of all of the project. Um, an assessment about their environmental impact. What exactly did you do and uh, what are the results? Uh, could you tell us something about that? Okay. Um, we, we evaluated three of the, of the pilots. So um, the Camden, borough of Camden, the um, Brussels pilot and uh, Paris, uh, the Green Link. Okay. We... We used uh, a tool called uh, Copert, which um, oh, I, uh, should I be? Passing? Do you have a clicker? Yes. Yeah. So um, this is the pilot that we have evaluated. Um, we used uh, Copert. Most of you uh, uh, probably are familiar with this tool. It's to evaluate uh, emissions from uh, road transport. And um, it uses um, very different uh, parameters, like the typ typology of the vehicle, the type of road, um, the type of fuel, all, this, all these things. And, um, and we use this tool in each of the, the three pilots that we have evaluated. And what we have um, uh, conducted, the type of analysis we have conducted, we you evaluated the situation as it was or as it would be before the, the consolidation center and afterwards in terms of uh, emissions. And uh, what we found uh, is that uh, not just emissions but also in terms of uh, travel distance. So we, we had uh, created a routing um, uh, algorithm to to calculate the best routing for the type of deliveries, and and with that, uh, the associated emissions with the typology of vehicle vehicles that are used with the consolidation center, okay. and what happened is that with this tool, uh, the results show that most of um, the the all the pilots uh, reduce on emissions and on uh, kilometers. So um, we can, can see, can I stand if up? If you want to stand up, oh, go ahead. Okay. So uh, for the b borough of Camden, we can see that um, it has decreased with the consolidation center 8.7% of the, of the deliveries. Um, the distance traveled hasn't changed very much, but the emissions with this consolidation, so it means um, that the, 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 the deliveries are more consolidated and the vehicles are different from what they were before. So the emissions, CO2 emissions are less 7%, um, PM emissions 5% and NOx uh, less 6. Um, for the bor in, in Brussels, the distance, the travel distance reduced, was reduced by 40%. Wow. And in this case, we have uh, calculated uh, two different um, uh, cases, not just the before and after, but the before and after only in the urban area. 
because this consolidation center here also goes to um, Ostend, Ostend, I think, okay. mm -hmm. up in the north. So we, if, if it was used only for the urban area, that we also calculated uh, only that. So you can see the big changes there. So 6.3% uh, of deliveries, not very much, but then on CO2, it's reducing 15%, 8% on PM, 24% on NOx. And um, for the green link, um, this is the highest because uh, of the cargo bikes. So the cargo bikes um, don't have any uh, associated emissions to it. Okay, they're electric, but we're only looking at uh, from tank to wheel uh, perspective. So we're not uh, taking into account the emissions related to the production of electricity. Mm -hmm. So in this case, uh, the cargo bikes are zero um, emissions. So you can see uh, 80, around 80% 80 of reduction of emissions. Yeah, and um, basically this this was the the study that we've we've uh, conducted, and what it shows is that uh, is it's very possible to um, reduce a lot on the emissions and on the distance traveled by taking into account uh, uh, different types of vehicles uh -huh. which emit less, different routing, and uh, consolidating more. I mean, uh, if, if the yes. consolidation is it's well done, if there's no um, uh, subsequent deliveries, uh, I mean, if the suppliers are not themselves delivering inside uh, the area, where the consolidation center is delivering, this will reduce much more on the emissions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what we should do in order to reduce even more emissions is just more consolidation. Um, not just more consolidation. I mean, it's uh, changing on the type of vehicles, uh, going more for electric vehicles, mm -hmm. um, and, um, and also on the... Um, On the part of, uh, yeah, yeah, consolidating. I mean, it's like it's sorry, it's like that. It's consolidating, changing on types of vehicles, and uh, that yes. should that should do the okay. most of the work. I mean. Mr. Dashamo, we saw that your project is very successful on that, on reducing emissions. It was a choice to work only with uh, cargo vehicles, cargo bikes. Yes, I mean, it depends about the city of uh, where we are working on. So here in Paris, we, are, we wanted to enjoy uh, the advantage of cycle lane, bus lanes. Uh, there is a lot, there is a bike culture in the cities. The cities has promoted the use of bicycle for everybody. So for a city like Paris, the cargo bike is a good tool to, mm -hmm. to, to do the deliveries. Yes. But it won't be the case for probably Brussels or in other cities okay. where you have a less density of But order. also it depends on the size of the goods. Some yeah. goods you cannot transport by bike. Exactly. So that's why the system has to calculate uh, a round. And then when we calculate the round, we enter some parameters. And the parameters will be like the distance, the speed, the type of vehicles, if it's a cargo bike or if it's a van, the, the type of driver, is it a student, is it a, work, a full worker, part-time mm -hmm. worker. Mm -hmm. So thanks to these parameters, you can uh, do the, the meet between your supply and your demand. And then we try to match exactly the best, the best fit. Okay, but only working with bikes means that some suppliers cannot work with you because their goods are too big, for instance, uh, in order to be transported by bike. Exactly, this is the, the question we, we have always, saying that uh, we cannot um, move parcels with cargo bike. But the cargo bike, it's like a small van, so we can, it's, it's a capacity of two cubic meters. Uh, we can load until 300 kilograms of, of goods inside, uh -huh. and we can uh, do like 25, kilometer, okay. 25 kilometers. So for this, the, the cargo bike can be used for a B2C market, so it will be the e-commerce uh, customers like uh, Amazon, like Vente Privé, like Cezanne, etc. 
Um, and then if you want to work with uh, larger uh, parcels, we have to provide the customers with uh, another kind of vehicle. Yeah, that can be a small electric vans, like we use for uh, Savarevi to delivery um, uh, food to elder people in the city of Paris. So we deliver 1,000 uh, food um, yeah, boxes every day uh, with uh, a mix between cargo bike and, and small uh, vans. Okay, uh, Kom van Huizen from uh, the foreign uh, trade agency in Flanders. Your point is that we need other INCO terms for urban uh, logistics in order to make them financially uh, sustainable. What are INCO terms? Well, logistics is about many things. It's about organizing a contract of carriage, it's about a price, it's about invoicing, it's about delivery. Proof of delivery, filling in a freight document, revenue recognition, VAT, customs, and on and on. And you immediately see if people have to agree on all these issues, they will write, they will pay more to lawyers writing contracts than doing business. So what INCO terms are, they are standard solutions, 11 model contracts on all these issues of delivery that are summarized under a three-letter abbreviation. FOB, XWORKS, CIF, in a way that buyers and sellers all over the world understand what they're doing, mm -hmm. can calculate the budget, can calculate the selling price and so on. So these INCO terms, they're not a law. They're not a convention or a treaty, they're just a tool developed by the private sector the International Chamber of Commerce, to help people to do business. Now, what is typical for this? As it is no law, people use it voluntarily. And it looks at the past. It, the, the only way to have it done is that it reflects what people actually are doing. And the past was a system that was relatively easy to understand. You had a supplier and on the distribution side, you mostly had big distributor centers. So you had a full cargo going to a distributor center where it was delivered to the buyer. That's the buyer's address. So we deliver to the buyer. And from there on, the buyer was consolidating from all his different suppliers' goods to a supermarket, which created relatively little congestion because it's about that consolidation and then you can put on top other systems. But then globalization came along. And globalization is not about the discovery of China. Globalization is about people going on the internet and pretending to be distributors. You don't no longer need to be a specialist to buy goods in China or whatever. You have people that are organizing things and you have all sorts of retail shops they go to order directly with suppliers. Now that supplier still comes with a full container from his factory, but then he enters into a distribution center, and as he is delivering to the buyer, he is now going to dispatch, because we're on a one-to-one -one situation, with a huge number of trucks that are going to deliver one parcel at nine o'clock in the shop, and then a second at half past 10, and then a second at 12 o'clock, which is creating a lot of congestion and a lot of problems. That is the actual situation where, in good, where business models are built upon. And that is where, in fact, the problem is coming. You have a buyer who wants to have a budget, who wants to have a price, but in order to get this, you have a lot of congestion. So one of the challenges of the INCO terms now is how can we apply the efficiency of wholesale wholesale sales on the retail and even on the consumers. And you still have all these individual buyers who need only what they want in their shop and they don't want a full container. And you have all these suppliers bringing goods very efficiently to the distribution center. Now, what surprised me a little bit in eco-logistics is that you would have delivery over here and all these buyers then organizing on a delivered at terminal condition to supply to their own premises. Now my question to you is, uh, Euro brokers for example, will you reduce the cost of delivery if I say instead of deliver me at a warehouse in Diegem, deliver me at my address in the Wetstraat, 
will I get a lesser price? If I have to do this, will the supplier actually reduce the sales price? If I, as a buyer, now say I go to a Kiala shop to collect what's mine instead of you coming to me at my doorstep and providing goods. And what we see is that a lot of people who step into that solution, which we would like from an ecological and congestion point of view, that they pay double the price. Mm -hmm. Because this price stays the same, and now on top they have to pay that price. And there I think, and, and that's what Birgit uh, said to me, this is one of the problems we're having. You would like this to happen, but it doesn't happen for the simple reason it's not financially sustainable. People have to pay more to be ecological friendly. Now, I ask my own children, if you go on the internet and you have a delivery at your home address, or you have to go to a supermarket or a train station to collect the goods, what do you do? You, you choose the easiest solution. So and that is why we need other incoterms well, for city logistics. Well, we need other incoterms. I see, we have already picked up for Incoterms 2020. We change the Incoterms because behavior changes with changing logistical reality. And we have, but we can't impose something. ICC, and I think that's something that also the EU sometimes forget, you can only bring the people as far as they want to go. And you can create whatever rule you want, and that's one of the advantages of, of the private sector. It has to be realistic. It has, you have to want to do it to get it done, not only impose it, because then people will start bypassing. So indeed, in our opinion, it's mostly the manufacturers, Procter and I heard the word Amazon. In my opinion, to a certain extent, they hold the key. Because you have all these suppliers still bringing the goods on a consolidated point. But what you need now is to have one truck then, going through all these shops and delivering on a full container against consolidated the thing. But if you don't reduce that price, do you really think every retail offer, every consumer can organize logistics separately, is prepared to order transportation from a depot to his premises? Do you really think that will happen? It will only happen if we have these guys also doing this, sitting together, because they have the volumes, they can negotiate service level agreements, they can contract with carriers, and they have the, post, the, the software ability to consolidate. So in doing this, you would have still the same budget price. The buyer knows the all-in cost of what he's ordering, which is crucial for a retailer in order to calculate. And how do you do this? By having this guy consolidating on behalf of the buyer which means that risk and revenue recognition is still here when Procter & Gamble's and Amazon's box is opened, then we have invoicing, then we have delivery, revenue recognition, then, but the cost goes until that point. And this is a solution that actually the Incoterms rules do not provide yet. But what is the major trick of it? These managers know regarding transparency what that last mile cost. If they have the same price as with a very expensive solution, who is going now to have the efficiency gains? The ones where you create enough volume to have these efficiency gains changing behavior. On a retail shop, a one euro difference does not make enough difference. But on a manufacturer's level, a million times one euro makes the difference and makes it possible to have them indeed taking on only from an organizational point of view, only on the level we need that last mile, and then having the buyer still having his price, and we motivate people towards the behavior we want through uh, efficiency gains. And that would be what we are thinking about with, with Eco to City at the moment, uh, delivered at Terminal Plus. We deliver at the terminal, 
That's where the parcel for the retail shop or the consumer is consolidated. That's where the risk passes, where payment is due, where revenue recognition, where taxation and everything <laughs> occurs. But it's with the additional services of bringing it to your home at a consolidated basis. So it remains an all-in price for consumers and retailers and it shifts the workload to the people who have invested in the software systems and in the track and trace that makes it possible to organize. So this is now at the ICC for Incoterms 2020 to be embedded and to provide indeed that possibility. So which brings me to the last slide, and that's what big it, it, it phrases everything more or less in the same thing. In financial suspect, what do we see? That last mile is nothing compared to the overall logistics. But on the cost level, that last mile is 20 times as expensive as those first 100 miles. How can we get this done? Uh, how can we get the tariff rates is like this, but we should try to make this more efficient, and this is mainly by having indeed the supplier organizing the door-to-door, -door, creating this more efficiently and having the gains on it while the buyer not seeing a difference on his invoice that he's paying on the accounting system and not needing to invest in software, in organization, in discussions with carriers which they are not capable enough to the same extent as big suppliers are. That's very clear. <laughs> Thank you very much. And reactions to that? To what? Yes, over there. Karl Verham, uh, uh, Port Authority of Brussels. What I'm missing here in this discussion, and that's uh, from a logistic uh, point of view, uh, for me, uh, city distribution is to a large extent uh, related to uh, eliminating uh, empty loads. If you look at uh, the highways, out of one out of every three containers is empty. Yep. But it's also uh, one of the reasons why we have traffic jams. So if you look at uh, city distribution, my question would be if you simply uh, would exchange uh, a lorry or a trailer that is for 50% filled with four smaller vans uh, that are filled for 50%, what is your gain? So in fact, for me, in order to be, from a financial perspective, sustainable, you have to increase your drop size and also your drop points. Yep. And to a large extent, that's related to the way you're planning your tours. So IT here, like it is with Uber and with Airbnb, uh, it's with the IT that you will make the difference. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. So empty, uh, avoiding empty transportation is for me crucial. And the second thing, uh, second question I have, that's uh, without a financial support from the authorities in subsidization or also changing the business perspective by uh, uh, congestion charges. Is it from a logistic point of view, financial sustainable uh, for a private company to be uh, operational in city logistics? That's, that's another question I would have. Okay. Get, well, it, it's always getting back, so I have a problem with keeping it on this slide. This, I think, suggests the answer to what you're doing. As long as we stay on a one-to-one -one situation, we will never have full trucks coming into any city. But if we have an independent operator, logistical company, with multiple suppliers and multiple buyers, they can repackage the same way a supermarket chain is doing over here to have a full van going over, and then I come back to what eco -log uh, City Logistics was saying, we will not only deposit, but we'll also collect. We'll also collect the waste packaging, we'll also collect all the returns, we do a circle. And this is, I think, this here is where the answer lies. Who is going to do that? They will do it, I think, 
on instructions of these if there is sufficient financial <laughs> gains to take that at hand. But you see, it's no longer six vans running around. It's one van with all the supplies, so you have this supplier of shirts and this supplier of trousers and this suppliers of whatever. It goes into one big box. And then, the same way as you said with your, your bikes, you're planning the route in a way that you have a full truck going or a full van going through the city. But if you leave that decision to the consumer, to the buyer, I don't believe it will happen because he will not. One thing, you, one big problem, if you leave it to the buyer, he takes a risk, which means that there's a possibility of this price being higher than the budget predicted. I have a huge of admiration for the Camden or borough over there that there's one decision maker who is saying, I'm willing to buy at a price that might exceed my budget. Because delivered at my place is the safe budget with all the costs being done by the supplier. And however much I pay, I don't care. I will never go over it. Here you might go over your budget because at last mile you pay from your own pocket and there's always a risk involved. And there I think that suppliers on that scale hold one of the solutions. To be honest, I don't agree with you. Uh, you said uh, it's uh, the problem lies with the manufacturers. If you're a manufacturer, and I don't want to talk uh, on behalf of PNG, they're not dealing with a fragmented uh, spectrum of smaller retailers, so they're dealing with wholesalers. So the wholesalers have uh, the key here in uh, hand. That's uh, one of the issues. And then you can't forget if you have a cross-docking operation, you have extra handling, extra, there's a, a, a possibility that you have extra damage. Eh? So that, that's another issue that uh, comes into the picture over here. So I think the key is uh, here with, uh, with the, the wholesalers. Okay, Mikhail? Yeah, um, I think that uh, the consolidation example that uh, Mr. Is, is showing you, in fact, regarding the price, I will talk about the green link. We have two different jobs that we are doing. The first is that we are consolidating the parcels. So per parcel, we will have a fixed amount of time to handle the parcels and organize the runs. And then on the other side, when we are delivering these parcels, the cost per delivery will be decreased because the density will increase. So the time to deliver the same parcels, by the time they will have more volume on the same routing, the price will going down. So there is definitely a gain of efficiency in the, in the next months because we are comparing the traditional situation where you have all the parcels going from outside of the city, entering the city, and delivering uh, uh, the network of the, of the supplier. But the, the network of the Green Link, it's probably 50 times higher and more dense than the network of the, of the, yeah. of the supplier. So the, the example, in fact, it's mathematic. Yeah. So we are sure that in the future, if it takes l more time to go to enter the city, the cost for delivery will, will be higher yes. if we are not uh, compensating with this uh, solution. Yes, there are several questions. Uh, first, a s small reaction from Mr. Gaitle, and then there was a, qu a question over there, and then uh, the gentleman at the back. So first here, do we have the microphone? Because uh, you were I'm yeah. remarking directly to what Michael said. That's why. Yeah, so because one thing I, I thank you for, for making the point also, but what I think is important in the slides, I, I think what is true in this slide, for example, is that we should look for transparency. And we should look at, okay, making more transparent what is the last mile cost. And, in, and because today it's sometimes hidden when you go to local delivery points. What is also true, though, in the previous slide, which you showed, is that this is not something that is com entirely going to disappear. Yeah. I mean, most of the deliveries companies like ours do is we deliver to retailers who have their distribution centers yep. who still consolidate. Yep. And it's not true. I cannot imagine that all of you will suddenly tomorrow order all your products separately. Maybe you order toothpaste from my company and you order uh, spaghetti sauce from another company and you will still visit the shop to do that. And maybe you will shop online or you will shop offline. But there is also this consolidation. So 
I mean, that's a part where as a manufacturer you have very little impact. It is true that in a specific business case where, for example, my company delivers also to dentists, and dentists we ship small parcels, this is a different scenario yeah. where you look at someone else is doing the consolidation. Yeah, yeah. And I think, I mean, the before and after situation, although I, I like them a lot, they are in parallel. They mm -hmm. are not a yeah. before and after. This is a new situation with yeah. more e-retail, with more fragmentation, yeah. Yeah. and yeah. we are trying to solve the second one. Yeah. And I think the examples we all hear today are good ways to think on how we solve the second one. Because one additional comment I have, that's the cultural, it's maybe back to the behavior change, but in the past, what was always, if you get mail, for example, or you get a parcel, if you got a letter, since centuries, it was the sender who was paying for that letter. And as a user, you were not given the choice on what you wanted. So what I believe is that you also, you need to make it more transparent, you need to split it out in the cost, but you also need to give the, the receiving party the chance to also input on this is how I like to be received. Because today, with consumers, what you have is maybe, in some examples, there are studies which show 40% of a parcel drop to a consumer is failing the first time, because people are not at home. And that is causing inefficiencies with vans which drive around, which I think are costing. And who is paying in the end? It's always the consumer. Yeah. So, And that's something which I think the solutions we hear here can, can solve. But I would uh, very much like the point of, of the gentleman b before me there. It's not going to change the whole business as we do today. It's bringing a new solutions to a new yeah. emerging mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. 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 OK. You want to add anything to that? Well, uh, I, I do agree with you if there are wholesalers in between. I didn't eliminate the first slide on top where I gave you the thumbs up, because with a distribution, uh, with a wholesaler in between, we have well, acceptable control on the, the, the flows of the goods. It's only we see new business models where the wholesaler is dropped out. And that's what that's the two or three percent additional traffic in the city that creates the jam. There's one point where you pass the point of saturation, and it's only one van over that point of saturation that creates this congestion. So even if it only impacts on 5% of the deliveries, it might have a huge impact mm -hmm. on the overall congestion situation in cities. Okay. So I do agree with you. Main shipments will remain as efficient as possible. But the internet has created, in my opinion, very inefficient buyer's behavior. It has raised efficiency on the organization of businesses, but it has created a new behavior that we were not familiar with in the past. Mm. OK, I don't know who has the microphone just now. Uh, there was a gentleman here. And this business uh, is going to TNT, to the yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. tell yeah. us who you Five are, companies. please, yeah. and, uh, and who so you want to direct the question to. to <laughs> yes, good <laughs> afternoon. I'm representing the European Shippers you. Council, and my name is Gottfried Schmidt. And you can choose yourself who is going to answer the question. <laughs> uh, uh, the question is about the definition of, of uh, the seller, in fact. Because in international trade, you often see mm -hmm. that um, you have during the supply chain that goods are, um, uh, in fact, sold quite a lot of times. For instance, in the chemical sector, sometimes during the maritime transport, they are sold seven times. Um, if you look at that, you can question if a seller um, has enough knowledge about the local situation um, to, in fact, organize this transport in a efficient way. So that's, that's my question uh, at first. Another remark would be that um, also in the first workshop there was a lot of discussion about tools and there was said we have all tools. Um, that's true, but we don't uh, often use them very efficiently. And especially if you look to um, automation, to data, there is a certain reluctance to share them with each other. Because sometimes, uh, if you are a wholesaler, you don't like to have uh, your buyer to have the information about the producer. And who, how can we make the systems as safe as possible to give uh, shippers, uh, for instance, the seller, the feeling that his information will not be shared 
with people he don't, he don't like mm -hmm. it to be shared. So, in fact, two remarks on this. Thank you very much. First one is about the definition of the seller. Who is the seller? Is that something that is also included in the INCO terms? Yeah, it, well, I hope there's not a lot of chemicals being involved in city logistics and driving around in the city. We should focus on, on, on the issue at hand, which is, I've, in my opinion, mostly consumer goods that are going towards their final destination, which is whether a retail shop, whether a consumer. So on that level, the seller is the one who is, has the contract of sale, whether with the retail shop, whether with the consumer. That's what we're focusing on. That is the last mile we need to solve. And on that level, regarding transparency, uh, I, I can. I don't have the. I, I do agree that the big guys, they don't want too much transparency between themselves. But do you really think a shop here in the Avenue Louise is going to discuss at length on the last mile transport cost? That me as a consumer, I'm going to phone Amazon and I'm going to tell them. Well, well, you've made it clear to me how transparent it is, and now I want to get a half a cent off of here and half a cent off of there. We need to focus on, on the problem we want to solve. And here we're at the last stretch of the supply chain and how, where it started. It is the last stretch we need to solve. So I do not have the impression that we're talking with people who are on the want or who are extremely interested in this. So, and if it's the suppliers with Ecos to City or whatever, they can have any privacy agreement, confidentiality agreement, whatever they want, they will need it because they will work in a service level agreement that not only discusses on the track and trace, not only on the reconsolidation, but also on confidentiality issues and so on. So these are problems that I think are manageable. Mm -hmm. And the one condition that, that, that you, you do, everyone does at the level of his professionality and of his experience that, that you put the liabilities where they're best managed. That would be my reaction. There was a question in the back also. But <clears throat> thank you. Um, my name is Kevin Churchill from the uh, London Borough of Camden. Uh, Lamilo, one of the Lamilo uh, project partners, yes. work quite closely with with Nigel and Chris from uh, yep. from DHL. Um, yeah, I, I thank you for that sort of helpful walkthrough, helpful analysis, and that and that particularly sort of useful slide. Um, I think uh, you know an inco term is uh, is definitely a, a step in the right direction. I think it's only half the story in terms of what we what we saw on that slide. Um, you know, I, I think from from Camden's point of view, it comes back to sort of Nigel's point that he made earlier about um, we get what we. Have ask for as, as, as procurers, uh, and I'm a procurer and Camden's a, a procurer of a, a, a lot of goods. Um, what we've done in, in, in that example there is um, we've actually taken on, as Camden, um, the uh, responsibility for renegotiating some of those supply chain contracts. So on that diagram that, that, that you had there, um, we're in discussions and negotiations with the provider of stationary goods, of cleaning materials, of furniture, and, and so on. And a, a sort of successfully at the moment, there's a bit more work to do, successfully um, renegotiating those supply contracts for, for discounts, um, single digit discounts uh, at the moment, um, off of the price of those goods. Um, it's, it's, it's going well, you know, there, there's, there's more work to do, but, but, but it's going well because that's what we're asking for. And, and what we're doing with those supply chain savings that we're securing is at the moment using it to pay the, the consolidation center bill. Uh, volume's key to this. There, there, there will be a point in time where we um, get enough volume going through that consolidation center um, and have enough um, renegotiations with providers of stationary furniture, leisure equipment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Well, when one will be greater than the other, um, and we'll get to a point of uh, firstly break even, um, and then hopefully into a into a surplus. Um, you know, we'll see whether that's that's um, sort of achievable or not. Um, 
so that's 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 uh, what where, where Camden's at with this. Um, in in terms of a sort of a B to C sense, um, I, I think end end users in in, in uh, as a sort of private residents. Um, uh, so so not businesses, but you know pri private people that order off Amazon and so on. Um, I, I I wouldn't totally give up on 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 the extent to whether they might be prepared to pay for the service. Um, I think it really does depend on the size of the problem that they perceive to have with lots of these individual deliveries, you know, from lots of different companies, web shops and so on. Um, so I might be going out on a, on a bit of a line here, but I'm, I'm sort of going to suggest it anyway. You know, wh whether, whether what they'll be prepared to pay is 10 euros, 20 euros, 50 euros, this is your point, Birgit, from, from, from earlier. I don't know, but, but I think depending on the size of, of the, the problem that, you know, consolidation um, can solve, I think there possibly is a market there for, for the supply side to, mm -hmm. to, to begin offering and, and you know who knows maybe those private residents and indeed some businesses you know I, th I think there's a commercial model in there somewhere Qu quite what the price point is I, 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 I don't know but you know I think that's part of the solution as well. Michael what do you think because you deliver to a lot of private residences without mm. any doubt? Well I think um, it's difficult to, to answer but uh, I think it's uh, it's complicated to uh, to make efficient delivery because sometimes they are not at home, mm -hmm. so we need to find alternatives. Yes, okay, that's a small remark. Um, yes, Howard, another question, and then I want to talk very briefly, a few minutes about social sustainability as well. Okay, thanks, Tim. Uh, it gets to a sad stage when you actually know me. Uh, but no, no, um, no, no, no. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, I just come back to the Ingo terms and vehicles. I think one of the first conversations that Burkett and I had some time back was on this 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 question. So I come at it from a sort of a uh, a more traditional shipping background. And um, one of the worries I would have about your delivered to terminal plus, which sounds interesting and, and certainly very applicable to what. Kevin is doing in, in, in Camden, it would be perfect. I see a difficulty though when you're doing, we're dealing with either shops or uh, private people, people who are less uh, informed as to what exactly is going on. Because if you are doing it on that basis, you are the assumption is there uh, that I order this from uh, my material from the company, um, they deliver it. They get the delivery organized uh, because it comes all the way from China to just down the road. Uh, and they're, they're, they're going to take responsibility. And if something goes wrong, it's their fault. Mm -hmm. Now, by doing, by putting in a DAT plus, uh, the supplier is able to say, ah, oh, no, it, it, it got to the depot, fine. It was those idiots in the depot that messed it up. So the you're actually getting into a situation where you're going to have an argument. Um, and uh, so it, it is something, it's a very good idea, but it needs to be taken with so, some considerable care. That's a problem, isn't it? Well, well it, it is a problem, but if you don't accept that problem, you will never have <laughs> the last mile logistics solved. There's no way in between. Someone needs to be liable all over the line, and it's about a division. And I cannot imagine any manufacturer accepting liability beyond the opening of the seal on his box into the consolidation with other people's goods. So to answer it, it's, it's very easy. Let him do the plus insurance as well. And you know any transport insurance is 110%. So you have a 110% and any client whose goods get lost gets a refund of 110% of the price paid. But in the end, you will always come to that. There's no way between. You cannot create a void. Do you agree, Howard? <laughs> Not really, but, but to think. It's, not, it's, it's an interesting extra idea. OK, you can discuss a little bit more over lunch. Mm -hmm. Just uh, 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 last questions, because we're running out of time here for, for Michael. Um, what are the social sustainability elements? Because we've talked about environmental sustainability, uh, financial sustainability, but we also need people who do the jobs, mm -hmm. right? In fact, we almost only need people to do the job because at the end what we are not talking so much is the 
it's the, all the people that are doing the deliveries and we told uh, people who, in which in who we can trust uh, we cannot do the work because at the end uh, when a customer use our service he wants that the parcels has to be delivered on time with a trusted person and I think which is really important in our uh, business with the green link is to um, involve the, the people in the, in the, in the real uh, jobs. It's not because you are um, delivering parcels with a bike that you cannot do that job for uh, 10 years. We want to be uh, able to offer uh, jobs to many students, to people who have uh, complementary activities, uh, others who want to come from a traditional transport company to a new way of doing the same jobs. And um, I think that for uh, affiliating the drivers, we need to be able to offer them a real uh, salary, uh, which is um, competitive. Co competitive, but as well, which is um, adapted to the work we ask them to do. And sometimes uh, I struggle with that with my customers, is saying them that when you ask for deliveries, uh, and you have to uh, walk like fifth floor and you need to go down because the customer is not at home and then you need to uh, come back the same day or the day after with the same parcels to do the jobs. They, they need to understand that all these handling parcels, all this uh, energy that we put to deliver one parcel cannot be delivered for two euros. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. So if we want uh, quality deliveries using <coughs> new kind of vehicle using information system that are really complicated because as we see we need to optimize routing so it's a high investment we need to, to do the jobs and then you need to at attract people to do the jobs and then you need to uh, a real visibility on the contract that when you uh, hire them so it means that you cannot uh, work as the sector is working right now. So you cannot work with people like uh, just uh, giving them 100 parcels and pay them with 150 euros per parcel. This is hard, hard uh, reality, but this is the reality. So, so do you find enough people who want to do the jobs? But no. in fact, the, 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 yeah, the, what's happening is that we have many people who want to do the job, but if sometimes they will, they will leave the jobs after two weeks yeah. if they realize that they are not uh, integrated in a global project. And so you need to, if you want to sustain your workforce, you need to involve them in the business, you need to show them perspectives. And all that you can offer them only if you have good contract with your customers, with a, with a good visibility. You have a volume that will come after test period. Uh, you, if you want to expand, expand in other cities, you, you, you need to offer mobility. In the hub, you need to, to offer new uh, graduation, career steps, career steps etc. So we talk a lot about Uber, Airbnb, which is the biggest real estate uh, enfin, hotel company without owning any hotel in the reality. We talk about Uber having the biggest fleet of, uh, of taxi without owning any taxi. So the reality, I think it's a mix between the, this model, which are innovative based on variable cost only and a salary model in which you are uh, this is your core business you have a strong team skilled people and so you need always the, the balance between both so it's not easy at all to make a case also social sustainable no it's not easy but uh, the one who will be able to offer a european network and saying in every city you go you can work for mm -hmm. one company with harmonized process saying that I have my job is I was a dispatcher. He go to Milan, he go to London, everywhere he can do the jobs. These jobs he recognize and they work you know, on the same on the same level. That was uh, very interesting. Yeah. Um, okay, I think our time is up because um, lunch is on the program now. Um, I want to thank uh, uh, Rui Martin School van Heuste and uh, Michael Dachambeau. Uh, as I mentioned during lunch, we will have several uh, themed tables. 
please go and sit at one of the tables if you should want to talk further about the pilots. And the four uh, networking tables will be hosted by uh, Birgit Hendricks, Michael here, uh, Christoph de Vogel and Nigel Simmons. And again, I would like to remind you about uh, the Twitter feed on the wall. Uh, go ahead and tweet something about the conference. And um, in the, um, the lunchroom, there will be also a smart logistics interactive demo made by uh, List. So have a good lunch, and we'll meet again at, um, what is it, 2, Tara? 2 is fine. <laughs>